Hey friends, Jeff Fritz here, and I want to talk to you a little bit about DW Kit's Workflow Engine product. This is pretty cool. I was taking a look at some ways that I can set up workflows back and forth with an application that I'm building on stream, and I stumbled on Workflow Engine at workflowengine.io. You can see the link right there. Now, this is pretty cool because you can use their designer, integrate it with your application, let folks be able to design their own workflow processes, save that into a data store, and be able to retrieve the various components of that workflow process and use that to run through your application. Let me show you in this video how you can use the designer to build that process and then use both a console application and a simple web application to retrieve the contents of that process and show some very simple information on screen. Then I want to show you how you can update the process and how you don't have to change your applications and it'll just pick up those changes and continue functioning when you build it properly and flexibly so that it understands how to grow with the workflow. All right, let's go over to the website and take a look at how to get started. Here I am at workflowengine.io looking at their documentation about how to integrate the workflow engine with my application. It's pretty straightforward. I can download the designer and add that as a feature to my application. Now the designer connects to the workflow engine runtime, WFE, workflow engine. It connects to that runtime and will persist that state, that schema that I create inside of the designer and it'll write it into a database using whatever database provider I choose. That database provider has a series of workflow tables and instance tables for each instance of the process that's being managed. Now if I scroll down here further you can see it tells you here's how to set up your database, here's how to go through and configure everything so that you can use the designer and wire up the workflow engine. And you can choose providers like Microsoft SQL, Postgres, Oracle, even MongoDB. Now that's really great and I'll trust that you can take your time and go through the setup process here and configure Workflow Engine on your machine. Let me take you over to the designer and let's walk through creating a very simple initial process for let's say shipping giveaways from my stream. So here I am in the designer and you can see down in the corner over here I have a limited number of interactions that I can take with the designer because I'm in developer mode. I can only create so many activities and so many transitions between each of those activities. And that's okay because I'm in a developer mode. If I need more activities than that, I can go and get a license from the folks at OptimaJet in Workflow Engine IO and build out, register that, and be able to do more with the application. But for this, I only really need three or four activities. So let's create those. I'll create an activity here, and we'll call this Giveaway Winners. All right, so that's my initial point. Let's create another one here, and we'll call this one Stuff Envelopes. We need to put their prize in an envelope. And we'll have another one here. We'll call Take to Post Office. And we'll have a final activity, received by winner. And this is the final activity, so I'll mark it as final. And it's highlighted in blue over here, and it has the final name on it, so that we can tell it's the end of the process. Well, let's create some commands to enable the transition between each one of these activities. Commands are defined here for our entire workflow scheme. So I'll create a command called go, and I'll create another command called back. Let's start with those two simple commands. We might have more complex commands, complex names that we want to give to these things so that it's clear what the commands are stepping through the process. For this demo, let's make it simple so we can get through this quickly. So I'll connect these 
with the transition arrow and I could double click and specify that the trigger to go from identify giveaway to stuff envelopes is a command called go and we can connect those but maybe maybe I need to go back from here for whatever reason right maybe there's something wrong maybe we didn't get all the information about who that winner was maybe we don't have the right shipping information or whatever it might be we might need to execute a command to go back so I'll specify that and you see I have now two arrows to indicate that flow between these two activities let me real quick wire up the rest of the command flow in this in this process schema and our final command from take post office to receive by winner you can't really go backwards in that after we ship it to the winner they've received it and that's the end of it okay so we've got our simple scheme here created I can save that and it'll write it into my Microsoft SQL database in an XML format let's go over to Visual Studio and take a look at that real quick so here's my workflow scheme table and it's the scheme has a, a code here this is the name of that workflow scheme and by default the designer named it simple WF and here's the scheme it's in XML format and I can copy that out paste it into notepad we can see what this full document looks like it's got a series of commands right here there's go and back just like we created and you can see the activities identify giveaway winners stuff envelope take to post office received by winner there's nothing magic here these are the things we defined in the designer this lets us save that configuration into the database load it back into the designer and update it later if we need to let me go back over to Visual Studio now and show you how we can use this workflow scheme to build a console application that will allow us to step through the process so here it is it's a garden variety console application it uses that scheme code of simple WF that's the name of our workflow scheme that we're going to use to interact with workflow engine and we create an instance of our workflow down here with this create instance method we're going to identify a process ID just as a new GUID we don't need to remember let the machine remember what that is for us keep it in memory so we can reference it later then the workflow engine starts taking hold here and we start taking advantage of the API's that are made available to us and these are in a couple of NuGet packages that you can easily install into any .NET application. So my workflow, and I'm going to grab the runtime and create an instance. We're going to start the process using that scheme code that we identified earlier and that new GUID. Here's our new steps through the process. Okay, so there it is. And we'll just output create instance OK. We have a series of operations that we can take as we're going through our workflow process. We can look at a list of available commands, execute a command, set a various states, delete the process, even exit the application here. Well, if I want to execute commands, I can go down to this execute command method, and you'll see it'll list the available commands first by reaching into the workflow engine get the list of available commands for that GUID it's not passing along that schema name anymore it knows what schema it's in and it'll identify and return that list of commands as a collection of workflow command objects okay so it outputs that information to the screen and we can then read the line and when we say enter a command it'll go find that command from our workflow scheme and return that as a command object the workflow engine then says all right runtime execute this command and it will execute it okay these string empties here are referring to things about various states and security if we needed to carry that information along as well we don't need it for this very simple sample so we'll leave those as string empty it'll execute the command and then return the current state of the application 
Let's run this and see what it looks like. So here we are, I've got my simple menu at the command line, and it's already created an instance for me with process ID 64528 blah blah blah. I don't care. Let the machine remember that, but I'm currently identifying my giveaway winners. Terrific. Let's execute the next command in the workflow so I can go. All right, well, let's, let's go to the next step. Execute command OK, and now my current activity is stuff envelopes. Terrific. Let's execute another command, and now I can go back if I want to. And when it executes that command, it properly steps back, just as we mocked it up on the designer, to identify giveaway winners. I can continue stepping through this. Stuff envelopes. Take to post office. Received by winner. And I'm at the end of the process. There's no more commands for me to execute. Okay, that's pretty straightforward and a simple way for me to step through here on the command line. But I can do the same thing in a web application because this is just a NuGet package. It's just a library that I can reference and use inside of other applications. So let's go over to the web application and let me show you how I've done this with Razor pages. So here on my Razor page, Inside my page model, I have an instance ID that I declare up front that's going to be some new GUID. I don't care. And I specify my scheme code as that simple WF. So I'm referencing the same scheme that I wrote in the designer. I connect out using the same connection string to that database that I was using before. And I create an instance of my workflow process pointing to that scheme code and passing in the instance ID that I defined up here. I make my instance ID available as a instance property right here on this class so I can access it easier later. If I look at the output on my page, I get a list of commands by going through to the workflow engine and saying get the available commands for my current instance and I don't pass in any other information so I get a collection of commands. All right. So I'll output inside of this definition list element, here's the current state, and here's the current activity name for that instance ID. That's pretty easy. That looks similar to what I did in the console application. But now I'll create a form down at the bottom with some buttons that correspond to those various commands that I have. So I have a handle command page handler that'll receive the command name for each of those commands and I'll put a text label on it that matches that command. Okay. Now, that handle command page handler is back here on post handle command, and it takes in the name of the command. That was the route that we saw here, ASP route command. That command name will be passed in here, and we'll identify the command to execute by going back to the runtime, getting the list of available commands, grabbing the one that matches that command name that was submitted and we'll tell it to execute that command. Let me run the application. So here I am looking at my very simple application and it lists my current activity at the beginning of the process. Identify giveaway winners. And when I click go, it steps through to the next one. Stuff envelopes. I can go back, identify giveaway winners, and I continue forward and I can finish my process just by clicking buttons because it's identified these are the available commands for each step in the process. And it knows there are no commands available when I get to the end received by winner. But what if, what if I need to change my process? What if, what if I want to calculate the shipping costs and determine whether or not I want to reject that shipment and I maybe I want to offer something else to the winner because maybe I'm shipping it too far and the costs are too much. Well, I can go back to my designer, update the process, and my application doesn't need to change. Let's go back over to the designer and make that change. I'll restart and be able to get a new scheme and step through that new process. So here I am back in the designer and instead of stuffing envelopes and going right to the post office, Let's get rid of these two steps here and let's add a command reject costs. 
I'll save that. And we'll add one more activity. I'll just put it here to make it easier to see. And we'll call this calculate shipping cost. We'll connect that from here to there and we'll name this command go. We'll be able to go from calculate shipping cost to take to the post office because we'll go. Maybe we need to go back from the post office. Maybe we miscalculated our shipping costs. So we'll add a, the ability to go back from here. But from calculate shipping costs, maybe from calculate shipping costs, maybe we need to go back to identifying the winner. And we'll move the arrow around a little bit there. And this time we'll add a command for reject costs. Okay. That feels like a better implementation of my process. I'll save this scheme and go back over to my application and start a new step through the process and see how it behaves now. Okay, I'm back in the same application. I didn't change any code, but I can identify giveaway winners for this step through the process. It's referring to the same scheme that was updated, and I could say go identify the, the giveaway winners. Let's now stuff some envelopes. Yes, finish that. Now I get routed to calculate shipping costs. Well, maybe they're, they're not right, so let's reject, and it goes back to identify giveaway winners. And I can continue through just as I did before. And it updates the commands appropriately if I go back from take to post office, calculate shipping cost. It knows its way through these. I don't have to go and rebuild user interface because I've built my user interface to know the state of the document that's being passed through and produce those commands that you can act on that document appropriately here. Maybe there's different fields and things that I need to show around it. Maybe I need to carry that shipping cost through. That, that information about my process and what happens to the document as I'm going through the process, is outside the workflow engine. The workflow engine is just concerned about the commands and activities as I go through it. And I can even light up other things like security and different roles so that different folks are able to control and do the different tasks. Maybe I have an accountant that's able to reject the, those costs and not the folks in shipping. I can set up those roles appropriately. But what we've learned is that we can set up and use the designer from outside of our process, deploy it, make that somewhere that folks can interact with it, and the rest of my application can implement that scheme and very easily give my users the ability to interact with their processes using the same workflow that that powerful designer has built for us. Whether it's ASP.NET Core, Maybe it's a Windows Forms application or even a Xamarin application. You can reference and use these tools inside of your .NET applications. Check out some more of the features at WorkflowEngine.io. Happy coding!